In this video, we'll be talking about problem solving. So we'll be using a four-step approach to problem solving that's commonly used, where the first step is to understand the problem. So we want to know what is the unknown, what information is being given, what's being asked. The second step is going to be to make a plan, and this might involve one or more different problem solving strategies. Step three is to solve the problem, so we want to carry out our plan and check that each step is correct. The fourth step will be to look back, so we're going to examine our solution and check that our solution makes sense in the original statement of the problem. So what are some common problem solving strategies? Well, we could use a verbal model, we could write an equation, work backwards, draw a diagram, look for a pattern, guess and check, sketch a graph or a number line, make a table, make a list, break the problems into parts. There's lots of options. So if we look at the, our first problem that we have here, it says on January 22nd in 1943, the temperature in Spearfish, South Dakota fell from 54 degrees Fahrenheit at 9 a.m to negative 4 degrees Fahrenheit at 9.27 a.m. That's a pretty big fall. How many degrees did the temperature fall? So if we look here, our first step asks us to understand the problem. So it wants us to look at this and talk about the temperature change that happens. Our plan I think for this one, I mean, there's a could be a couple different options, but here I would say let's make a number line, and we could count in increments of um, of ten. But instead of going from zero to ten, I think I'll start at negative four, and then go to zero and then to negative four, and then from negative four, I mean, sorry, to positive four, and then at positive four, I'll go from four to 14 to 24 to 54, and those will be in increments of 10. That might work. Okay, and so now we're gonna go ahead to step three, and so we're gonna carry out our plan. All right, so I'm going to make a little number line here. And I'm going to start at negative 4 because that's the smallest amount. And I said I would go to 0 and then to positive 4. And then from here, I would count by tens. Okay. So 54 degrees is where we're starting. So this is where we're going to start. And we're going to end at negative 4. So that's where we're going to end. So we're going from 54 all the way back here to 4. And so we know that this is 10, and 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 this is 4, and this is 4. And so what we could do here is we could then add those all up to get our answer, which is 58 degrees. So now we just need to check to see if it's reasonable. So if I'm starting at 54 degrees and I'm going to fall all the way down to negative 4, does it make sense that I would have fallen 58 degrees? I think the answer is yes. So there could have been another way that you had thought might be easier to do this problem and it wouldn't necessarily be wrong. It's just a different way. So here we have our answer that the temperature fell 58 degrees degrees Fahrenheit. That's a pretty big drop. Okay, so let's look at our next problem. I'm going to go ahead and move it up so we have a little bit more room. All right, so here we have, you thought the balance in your checking account was $72 when you check your bank account online. You realized you forgot about a purchase that you had made. The bank account lists your balance as $34. So we're going to write and solve an equation to find the amount of the purchase that you forgot about. So when we think about our first step, kind of understanding the problem, 
which we're talking about money and it looks like we thought we had one amount of money but it turns out we actually have less so there's a purchase that we forgot about so now we want to make a plan and now it asked us to write and to solve an equation and so it's kind of telling us that it wants us to use the writing an equation as our problem solving strategy and that's fine so let's look at the information that we were given. So it says you thought the balance in your checking account was $72. But when you checked your account online, it said that you had a balance of $34. When you forgot, like, oh yeah, I made that purchase. I wonder, I forget how much that was for. And maybe you lost the receipt. You just don't remember. So we know about the $72 that we thought it was, but it's actually $34. So there's actually a couple different ways we could write this equation. But because our bank account is $34, then let's go ahead and say that we want our equation, so we have our equation, we want our equation to equal the bank balance. There we go, now it's spelled right. Okay, which we know to be the $34. Now, we know that to get from 70, from $72, sorry, down to $34, we're gonna have to subtract some number. Now, luckily, we know that it was just a purchase, meaning one purchase. that we forgot about. And so that question mark there can represent our P for purchase. So if we write our equation, we thought we had $72, but we don't. And we have to subtract the purchase that we had forgotten about, but now we remember. So once we subtract that amount, that will give us the correct balance of $34. So here we've finished the first part of what we were asked to do. We've written our equation, right? So that part is finished. But now we need to solve it. All right, so we're gonna do that over here on the right-hand side. So I've rewritten 72 minus P equals 34, and we need to get the P by itself. So if I wanna get the P by itself, we need to get rid of the 72. Well, right now, the 72 is positive, and the opposite of a positive is a negative. So if I do the inverse operation of a positive, which is a negative, and I subtract 72 from both sides, that's going to go ahead, and that's going to get rid of our 72. So now we have negative P equals negative 38. Now, some people forget to bring this negative down. It still has to come down. It's still there, it doesn't go away. So we have to remember about that. So make sure that you've brought that down. So if we look at our problem, we see that the P is still not by itself. So how are we gonna move the negative away from the P? What does that really mean? Well, if we think about it, what this is really telling us is that we have a negative one times P equals negative 38. And what is the inverse operation for multiplication? Dividing. So we're going to divide both sides by negative 1. And that's going to make our negative 1 disappear. So we're going to be left with P equals and negative 38 divided by negative 1 is going to be positive 38 because a negative divided by a negative is a positive. And so we have that our purchase was $38. So now we just need to check to make sure that that seems reasonable. So if we add 34 and 38 together, will that make 72? And 
You can also check it by taking 72 minus 38 and seeing if that equals 34. In both cases, we're right, and we can check that right over here. Let's go ahead and let's check it, and we'll take the 72 minus the $38 purchase, and we see that we would be left with a balance of $34, so it worked out. So here we have our equation, and we have the purchase amount that we had forgotten about. And we're done.